Okay, today we're going to be looking at uh, the Surrealist Artist, as you can see from his final piece, Idea Sheet. Uh, what the students have to do is produce a bedroom uh, in perspective and use objects uh, juxtaposed against each other, producing uh, Surrealist style bedrooms. I'll take that away. I'm just going to look and show you one of the objects which might be in the bedroom, uh, a teapot, as you can see here drawn the teapot out uh, and we've done the lesson on contour lines already so now what we're trying to do here is look at the teapot and produce uh, a watercolour painting which actually exposes the three dimensionality of the teapot now in order to do that we have to follow the contour lines you can see we've drawn them on lightly here going around the teapot uh, and we have to follow the lines with our paint and we did it with the Westerman to some extent, but this is going to be a little bit more intensive here. So what we first have to do is look at the watercolour pack we've got here and basically start to look at the range. We're going to use a range of greens to be honest with you here. Uh, we can start by looking at the darkest green and we add blue here. <coughs> and a small part of the yellow. This will give us the darkest range on the edge of the teapot and any shadows which we've got there. It's pretty much quite dark green there. Not to worry if you don't get the colours exactly like the first time. With watercolour you can build on top. Now, the lightest colour, obviously to make green you use yellow and blue. We're going to kind of get a nice light green at the top here. As you can see it's more squares you produce, different types of green. I mean, you can even go to the point where you can't put any blue at all, so you get the yellow. Okay, and then we're going to gradually mix different varieties on these squares here. As you can see, adding more blue, you can experiment on the outside edge here. You can see, make sure you get it right. And again, the more blue you add, the deeper the green gets. And you can go back to these just to check, as you can see there, to the point where your final green, the darkest green, is almost like a blue there. So that's a gamut, that's a gamut of different types of greens. You can in fact use uh, reds and yellows to make oranges, or you can even use reds and blues to make a series of purples. We've actually done this before with the Westerman image, uh, but it's just re reenacting. But this time we're going to actually impose the tones to make this teapot look three dimensional. Now, I've actually drawn the lightest areas, you can see the teapot here from life, indicating where the lightest parts are. So we can actually leave those for now. Maybe just look at the darkest parts first. Now, the darkest parts are probably going to be the top of the teapot here so let's just get a nice dark tone in there you can underdo it we can always go back to working uh, and add little bits more to the darkest darkest areas that's not such an issue and the top of the pot here where's the dark area following the contour lines you can see Vary the brush size, I mean for larger areas, as you can see here, we'd obviously want more tonal areas. And here you can see, and I'm making a colour, double check, this one being pretty much a mid-tone. And we can use that on the edge here, following the contour lines again as you can see not going over the areas which are light, we're leaving them till later on. And gradually, we can start to build different layers following the contour lines. Now, if you do make a mistake, you can always use the brush to wipe out areas. So for instance, if I make a mistake here, for instance, like that, I don't like the color, what I can do is put the brush in water take away the water a little bit up there 
dry the brush out as you can see and just take away the paint there and within five minutes that would be dry you won't see any of the mistake so the rest of the demonstration I'm going to be producing different bands all these colors here different greens to follow the form of the uh, teapot again now we're going to be looking at making a darker around the edges there we go. We're also going to put a shadow onto the teapot as well. Don't worry, uh, you better, sorry, be very careful that you make sure that you don't let the paint bleed because what will happen then, it'll bleed and flow into the other parts of the painting that you don't want. So around the edge here, I've got one of the darker areas. Uh, we can label these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and number eight here is going to be right around the edge. You can see there, following the contour lines. I'm going to put a shadow in there as well for now. As you can see we gradually start to go further back, maybe now looking at number 8 or 7 on the next run and so on. Again I'm making sure not to touch the areas of highlight. They will be left there. Let me look at that one. see the pot uh, begin to looking three-dimensional I can actually revisit I think that some of the time you can't get this perfectly right first of all as you can see that some of the areas here need to be darkened we can leave those as a tone there maybe a seven or a six to go into here but we'll leave that until a little bit later let it dry because you want to work wet and wet as we said and then we can go back to the top of the teapot. Looking at the number there, probably looking at number four for there. Again, following the three dimensional form around with those contour lines. maybe four minutes sufficiently enough for us to go back maybe revisit some of the edges 
here, which I've probably under painted, maybe needs a little bit of a darker tone. Yeah, you can see there. So it's possible to go back and go over the tones if they're lighter. Not very difficult, it's much more difficult to do it if they they're lighter tones. Again, following the form here. And you can see the highlights we haven't hardly touched and they shimmer, they stand out. So if you don't touch the, the highlights, leave them as white as the paper, they will really stand out. And it's very important to make sure that you get this pot looking three dimensional because all the objects in the Magritte room have to look 3D, that's what Magritte will do in his own work. Again, looking around the top of the pot here, underneath, this paint having dried out, you can see, we can now begin to work on top of some of these colours. It's a very, very finite process, you can't get this completely right overnight, but the more practice you, you have with watercolours, better the effect. Again, going back to the top of the pot, as we said before, we can always make the watercolour a little bit darker. We found the range there, you can see. This same kind of principle applies when you're doing the bottles as well. If there's an opportunity to draw bottles, if there's an opportunity to do combs, any object you choose, you must follow the same principle with all the colours, looking at the contour lines, following the lines with the paint to get the desired effect. Okay, that's the end of the demo.